item we're slightly behind schedule but not all that uh, behind and the item we're going to deal with now is raising human rights awareness among local and regional rep elected representatives and we're also going to be talking about the role of the uh, representatives in local and regional authorities. The document in question here is CG 2110. I would now like to give the floor to Mrs. Ilse Brandskedis, Chairperson of the Management Board, European Union Agency for Fundamental Rights. You have the floor. Mrs. Branskedis. You have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, it is a real pleasure for me to be able to come here and address you as the chairperson of the management board of the Fundamental Rights Agency of the European Union. Because it seems to me that we have a lot of common concerns, and it's a wonderful opportunity to have this dialogue. Uh, I would like to talk about the international human rights local delivery. It's the role of indicators in enhancing the systematic implementation of human rights across the levels of government. The role of human or fundamental rights at the local level, as has been stressed here already, and I heard already yesterday, uh, just as today, and you certainly know better than anyone else, are really for, first and foremost exercised at the local level. Local and regional authorities have legal competence for many policy areas which have impact on people's fundamental rights. Fulfilling human rights is a shared responsibility and therefore requires that various levels of government work together. The need for such multi-level coordination of fundamental rights protection has been highlighted in much of the Fundamental Rights Agency research, whether in the area of rights of the child, the situation respect of the fundamental rights of Roma, in areas of disability or migration and asylum, Local and regional authorities play a pivotal role. This is in provision of services, for instance, when ensuring access to health care and education, or also as urban planners, particularly in the case of Roma, this is an essential role. The most recent example for us is our just published, uh, some 10 days ago or so, report on access to health care for irregular migrants. The research has highlighted the important role that local and regional authorities play. For example, they help ensure that emergency health care is provided to irregular migrants and that mothers can give birth in hospitals without fear of being reported to the immigration authorities. Our reports frequently highlight many good practices at the local level, for instance, in how to address the precarious housing situation of Roma in many EU member states, or how children in vulnerable situations can be guaranteed access to education. But there are many other examples as well, of course. Accountability for human rights starts and ends at the local level. Yet, at the level of international law, Human rights treaties create obligations for the state, but do not typically address local authorities expressly, explicitly. In today's reality, with extensive decentralization or devolution, local authorities are often the only parts of the state who in many substantive areas actually implement human rights obligations on the ground. So when following up on human rights legislation with the implementation, a real division of labor is involved. It is shared responsibility in the true sense of the word. Therefore, local authorities must also be integrated, actively included into the national human rights policy planning in all its phases, in the implementation and monitoring as well. Joining up the levels of government, to assist the EU member states in this endeavour, in 2010, the agency launched a pilot project 
to explore how the implementation of human rights can be made more effective through collaboration between the different levels of government. This type of integrated planning and implementation is the joined up governance of fundamental rights. This approach is well established for other policy areas, as you well know, but it's rather innovative in the field of human rights. Joined Up Governments aims to address complex human rights issues by bringing together central government agencies, local governance structures, also specialized bodies, and private and voluntary organizations. We are pleased that the Council of Europe's Office of the Commissioner for Human Rights is contributing to this process, and we benefit greatly from that with expert input and that also Lars Molin participated in one of the first consultation meetings that we had on this project. And could I please take this opportunity to thank Lars Molin for his excellent work recently with the report developing indicators to raise awareness of human rights at local and regional level, where he makes many important points, but we are very happy to see that he also makes reference to the potential contribution of the Fundamental Rights Agency through its report and through our cooperation uh, that we can develop further. Actually, already in Mr. Moline's report of last year, the role of local and regional authorities in the implementation of human rights, he also recalled the work of the Fundamental Rights Agency with its data collection, which is, of course, the whole reason that the agency exists to be developing methods for data collection and doing it, and as well, again, the development of the methods and standards to compare the comparability, to improve the comparability of the data. We have also, the Fundamental Rights Agency Joined Up project in 2012, we hope, it will result in a toolkit, the more practical uses of the work at the end of the project, on how to enhance the systematic implementation of human rights standards across the levels of government. This will highlight how to make fundamental rights coordination more effective and how to facilitate access to rights at the local level and hopefully be a very direct practical use uh, at the local level. The third issue I would like to address concerns the human rights indicators specifically. Common indicators which are used across all levels of government are obviously a key tool in ensuring that human rights obligations are complied with, but also that policy, law, and practical steps are taken that have real impact. Indicators can indeed contribute to comparing developments over time, particularly, both positive and negative, and in this way also assess the effectiveness of measures taken. Indicators may also be used to compare similar systems and in that way provide evidence on what options then would work better. The Fundamental Rights Agency organized a symposium on fundamental rights indicators in May of this year. This was intended to bring together experts, various stakeholders for discussions, a real dialogue, and thus also to contribute supporting the agency's ongoing work in developing human rights indicators in line with our mandate to develop and apply methodologies to enhance comparability uh, and uh, analysis between member states of the data. Mr. Moline refers to the system of the structure process outcome indicators as developed by the UN Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights. The agency is in its work regularly collecting data that can be used for structure and process indicators and in, 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 in our ongoing work, which is really what we have been doing uh, ever since the beginning. But the agency is also, through its large scale surveys, and the collection of primary data contributing to outcome indicators. This is the actual situation on the ground and how persons, the rights holders, experience and perceive the enjoyment of rights. 
We intend to develop and systematize these efforts in the coming years as we have found that this is a real value added in work that the Fundamental Rights Agency can do and that is useful not only internally for the agency and indeed the EU institutions but we hope also uh, serves others including in the context of the Council of Europe. For our topic here, it may be interesting that in the coming couple of years we will be in a position to provide some data relevant for indicators at the local level in relation in particular to the situation of Roma, where we have ongoing efforts to collect such data. Another example is also research on the rights of LGBT persons and their duty bearers at the local level, and this we will start next summer to develop this project. So in the near future, the Fundamental Rights Agency will be able to provide primary data that can feed into indicators for local level situations within certain thematic areas. We just completed the field research for FRA's Joined Up Governance project and found evidence that targets and benchmarks constitute key incentives for an effective joined up approach and hence real human rights implementation. Measuring compliance with human rights standards obviously requires sound evidence base and includes data that reveals shortcomings as well as achievements. While for the national level data collection may seem like a daunting task, at the local level a lot of data already exists in local registries, but it's not necessarily analyzed in human rights terms. Take, for example, all available statistics on housing, education, social security and health. This is a vast pool of resources for human rights indicators with a human rights perspective. The possibility to claim rights and the knowledge of the services as being rights and rights related uh, is relevant. If these can be linked to national, European and international levels for use in monitoring, evaluation and advice and policy making, in a joined up manner, so much the better. In this way, the good efforts of the Congress and indeed of Mr. Lars Molin are commendable. So my conclusion, three points already known, but reinforcement, human rights matter a great deal at the local level. There is a clear need to join up the levels of government. It's essential to include the local authorities in the entire process and the indicators are required to boost the effect of the implementation so that we can learn and indeed develop lessons for the future. There are context specific challenges, but it's only through discussions and dialogue, including inter-institutional ones as this one, that we can bring this question forward. I thank you very much and I'm sorry I have abused a few moments of the time. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I'd like to thank you, Mrs. Pranskeres, for coming to talk uh, before us uh, and for the very hard work that you've carried out. Uh, the Congress uh, and the Fundamental Rights Agency of the European Union have been cooperating for quite some time. We have regular exchanges and sharing of information. It is very important so far as we're concerned for human rights at local and regional level to be properly implemented and for the representatives of these different levels to, uh, have, uh, to give, take greater account of this subject. This is why we are very grateful that Mr. Molin is our rapporteur. He's the chairman of the monitoring committee because the monitoring committee's reports to our Congress are always very important. The more importance needs to be attached to these reports, and these reports should also take full account of the situation of human rights at local and regional level. And this should be done even if uh, there are some groups who have the opinion that monitoring reports should only focus on democracy. The finding I would make here is that our Congress does not 
think uh, that human rights uh, issues should be dealt with separately from democratic developments. This is something that is an absolute uh, integral part of uh, what we're dealing with. Human rights really does uh, very much uh, belong to this as a subject, and I'm therefore delighted that our rapporteur for this is Mr. Mullin. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Dear colleagues, let me first apologize for my voice. It's not the best this week, but it's getting better and better. Um, as you will remember, in March 2010, the Congress approved the, uh, the resolution recommendation based on uh, the report on the role of local and regional authorities in the implementation of human rights. Our intention was to make local and regional authorities aware of human rights because they stand in the first line in the delivery of services to the citizens. This is a new vision of things. Looking at human rights through the eyes of mayors, city councillors, and municipal administrators is our contribution to the core mission of the Council of Europe. We could call this approach human rights for and by local authorities. So what does this mean in practice? It means that local authorities must provide the necessary budget and training for their members and staff. They must establish independent complaints mechanisms at local level, and they must be sure that their citizens have equal access to public services, and they must set up a system of quality control. The question is, how are they going to do that? The report you have before you today tries to answer that question. We propose guidelines so that we can target our work in areas where human rights promotion and awareness raising are needed. The report we develop, in this report we develop indicators uh, suitable for our purposes. We answer difficult questions such as which rights and freedoms we need to look at, how to choose among them, and how we intend to go about data collections while we are meeting interlocutors during our visits when we are monitoring the charter of local self-government. As regards to the indicators, there is no need to reinvent the wheel. I propose to use the indicators established by the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, who have developed and defined three types of indicators. That will be useful for us. That's outcome indicators that concentrate on quantitative data, structured indicators that focus on laws, and the process indicators which include, for example, decisions to improve the situation. As how to collect our data, the starting point will be information gathered from monitoring uh, performed by various bodies within uh, the Council of Europe and information from the Fundamental Rights Agency of the European Union. We will then refine our data in face-to-face -face meetings we have with local and regional authorities during our monitoring visits. As regards which rights to look at, some are more crucial than others for local authorities. In some, they may play a limited role. For other rights, local authorities play a central role, such as many civil, political, economic and social rights. Talking of social rights, and we have been talking about them this week as the Council of Europe celebrated the 50th University of the uh, European Social Charter. The great paradox of these rights is 
but in times of crisis, they are the ones which are put aside when all when although they are the ones that are most needed. In our report, we present a short list as a starter to the work of a Congress. The list includes rights uh, as uh, access to education, health and housing, and so on. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the Council of Europe departments who have contributed to a final version of the report before you today. I am now satisfied with its content. This is due to the very useful and substantial feedback they gave to us. This cooperation and support has made it easier for us in our discussions with a committee of ministers during this year to clarify our role and the unique contribution we as Congress can make in this field. In November, the ministers of local and regional affairs will meet in Kiev, Ukraine, and one of the items on the agenda will be human rights implementation at local and regional level. The Congress will present uh, your decision today and we will be taking that with us when we are going to Kiev. I think we are on the right track as part of a new trend in local political li life. The actors in the field are all turning towards the local level for better implementation of human rights. Yesterday, you adopted a resolution on citizen participation. You heard Mr. Ribo in Masso, the Ombudsman of Catalonia. And today, you have listened to Mrs. Brands Kiris uh, from the Fundamental Rights Agency on awareness raising among uh, local and regional authorities. And in the past, we have heard the Commissioner of Human Rights, Mr. Hammerberg, speak in support of us, and he has done that many times. I am happy to say we have made a long but successful journey. Today the Congress stands stronger, and there is respect for our work in this field, and I believe that we will add value to the implementation of human rights. Let me then conclude and uh, uh, say a few words about the draft resolution. Uh, the resolution builds on the interdependence of human rights and democracy. This is an interdependence of which I am more and more uh, convinced. We want the right to manage our own affairs at local level. At local level, there is no democracy. And democracy without human rights is not a true democracy. The resolution um, makes contrary recommendations to the Congress and to local and regional authorities themselves. We have to do our own homework. We have to engage in uh, uh, an innovative action. We have to develop plans to raise awareness among elected representatives, as well as among local civil servants. We have to train our local authorities and to exchange good practices. We have to develop independent complaints mechanisms, such as ombudsmen at local and regional level. We have to be ambitious, but also concrete in, uh, in order to be efficient. In about five years' time, uh, we will have to present the first abridged report on human rights in our 47 member countries, seen from a local and regional level point of view. This will give us an opportunity to monitor our work. It will also provide input to a joint Council of Europe effort for human rights, democracy, and state of law. 
In the near future, we intend to convene an international conference to debate questions related to the implementation of human rights at local level and to propose a Congress action plan for 2013 to 2015 on this issue. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Molin. The debate is now open. I'd like to ask Mr. Fairbeck to take the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Members uh, of the Congress, on behalf of the Dutch delegation, we very welcome this inspiring uh, report. We are very, very happy with it. We believe that the developments in the Congress discussing human rights is a very, very important development for our Congress as a whole. And collecting information on good and less good examples with the objective to raise awareness in our, is, in our opinion, basic to the work we are doing, defending also the Charter of Democracy. Our recent activities to investigate the situation of our member, Laila Guven, is also an example of this ambition. At the same time, we are somewhat worried about the available time and money to realize the objectives of this report. What budgets are available? And how does the Bureau organize enough working force to implement the proposals? As a Dutch delegation, we will take our own initiative in our own country to put human rights on the agenda of local and regional authorities. We will make our own analyse uh, on human rights to see what's happening in our cities and see what's happening in our regions. And we will prepare this as a, a preparation to the monitoring that we will be receiving the coming years. And we urge the other delegations to do so in their own country too. So we do not only look at others on this subject, but we also look at ourselves. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed for that very important contribution. Mr. Illes from Hungary, you have the floor. Mr. President, dear colleagues, I think that one of the most important issues for us decision makers of local or regional authorities to collect exact and real information about our community, our people. It's easy to use the number of the population, the age, and other statistical data. To analyze the data, to measure the status and the evolution of human rights is more complicated question. Therefore, I am convinced that the indicators and the methods to develop indicators according to this report will be very, very useful for local and regional authorities. On behalf of the Hungarian delegation, let me engage to thank you for the monitoring committee, especially for the rapporteur, Mr. Lar O. Molin, for preparing this report, which helps the work of not only the Congress rapporteurs, but also local and regional leaders. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I gather that recently we have dealt intensively with these issues, not only in theoretical but also in practical terms, and we've also had a debate about the situation of Laila Gulen, and we've talked, of course, about human rights. We've had a debate on the situation of the Roma at local and regional level. And we have had some practical examples of the way in which we implement human rights in connection with those debates. And I think we have managed to transform this item into one of the main items on our agenda and for that of the ministers in November in Kiev. And we will continue to deal with this issue in future. And we will also see to it that in our monitoring reports, on a regular basis, we take account of the state of enforcement of human rights and the state of human rights generally at local and regional level. 
So thank you very much indeed to you, Mrs. Brands Karis. Thank you very much for all your hard work and for everything that the agency does. Mr. Molin, thank you very much to you for all your commitment. I don't know if you care to respond. Yes, please go ahead. Thank you much, very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, I think uh, we have had a very positive reception when we have just introduced uh, human rights as uh, uh, one of our, our very important areas of a, of a Congress. And, and that's also one of the core values of the Council of Europe. Uh, uh, there was one question from Mr. Verbeek from the Netherlands. What budget is available? Uh, I think the Congress has gone through a reform process now and is prepared now to take on the issues on human rights in, in a good way now. And I have a discussion with our Secretary General about that. Uh, then the cost for the local authorities and regional authorities I don't think that we need more, more money for awareness raising and very much in the daily work in our local and regional authorities uh, deal about meeting the needs of citizens and dealing with just human rights um, and also to have a dialogue, for instance, with a national level, it doesn't cost much money, but it's very important to emph uh, emphasize that we need this dialogue between the different uh, levels uh, in, in our member states. But thank you very much for this uh, debate, and I am looking forward as we are going on working with human rights. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Glaso Molin. We now come to the consideration of the draft resolution. The draft resolution is contained in document uh, CG 2110. No amendments have been tabled. The Congress will now vote on the draft resolution. Will those in favor of the draft resolution please raise their hands? Those against, abstentions, the draft resolution contained in document CG 2110 is adopted.